99.3 Talk FM. It's Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. Here's Brian Houston. Five o'clock, happy hour. And we are glad you're here with us for this uh, final hour on this Thursday afternoon, getting closer to the weekend. And that means we're also one day closer to the Super Bowl, the 49ers against the Baltimore Ravens, the Har Bowl, or whatever else you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, And we are very fortunate to uh, be able to talk to a gentleman who has covered this Baltimore Ravens team for several years now and is, a, a matter of fact, covering them very closely now as a member of BaltimoreRavens.com. With us right now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting-edge training for the serious athlete, APECGO.com, the uh, results show when the athletes hit the field. It's our friend from BaltimoreRavens.com, John Eisenberg. How you doing, John? Fine, how are you? Doing very well. Thanks very much for coming on. We were glad to have you on. We talked about your book, and we'll get to that uh, in just a minute, the uh, 10-gallon war. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you, first of all, about this this football team uh, in Baltimore. This is a team, uh, it's been kind of a strange team in that nobody really has given it much of a chance in any of these playoff games, and yet they keep on winning. Well, yeah, I mean, they entered the the playoffs as a number four seed uh, in the AFC. They'd lost four out of their last five games entering the playoffs. So uh, there's a reason why not a lot of people were picking them. Uh, They didn't end the season very strong at all. Uh, They did uh, play a real strong game against the New York Giants uh, to lock up a division title. But other than that, it was pretty much of a whitewash there the last month of the season. But, um, you know, it's just been kind of weird. It's, uh, it's happened before in the NFL. I mean, it happened with the New York Giants last season. It happened with the Green Bay Packers the year before. And it's happening with the Ravens now. And that is uh, your, your, some of your key guys get healthy just in time for the playoffs. And you get on a roll. And you have some talent to begin with, which the Ravens do have. And uh, you just put it all together. That healthy uh, thing is really important, especially on defense. And, and uh, they did. I mean, this is a team was in almost in the Super Bowl last year. So they have some things going for them, and it's just sort of worked out. Everything's working, and they're hot at the right time. Uh, Tell me about Joe Flacco. You know, all the debate has been uh, for the last couple of years, is this guy an elite quarterback? Can he win a Super Bowl championship? And, you know, every time you think, okay, it looks like he's on the verge, then he'd have a a real clunker of a game. Uh, But, uh, man, he's played great in the playoffs. Yeah, he's been wonderful in the playoffs. I mean, he's up and down. There's a reason why there's a debate. Uh, he'll have some clunker games and some off games. And, I mean, they had some this year uh, where the Ravens couldn't get the offense going. They fired the offensive coordinator, Cam Cameron, in December. And uh, I think that Joe is is meshing better with the new guy, Jim Caldwell, the former coach of the Colts. Uh, he's liked him from the outset. He was a quarterback's coach here before. Uh, they brought him in this year, and, and uh, he really helped Joe with his fundamentals. And since since Caldwell took over, Flacco has been phenomenal. I mean, it's just a night and day. Twelve touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, uh, you know, after you throw out the first game that they had together, which was that game where they got killed by the Broncos uh, back in December. And since then, 12 touchdowns and no interceptions. Wow. And it's just red hot. I mean, they're using him differently. They're moving him around in the pocket. He's out of the shotgun more. He's using the middle of the field. And he's just as obviously really comfortable with what they're doing. And it's just reflecting. I mean, he always, already had some confidence and a big arm. He's probably got the biggest arm in the league. And uh, it's just paying off. Well, he's looking great right now. And it is amazing when you think about it, the fact that uh, John Harbaugh uh, – and, and I'll ask you, did John Harbaugh make the decision uh, to fire Cam Cameron or was that made from, from above? Well, I think above didn't mind at all. Uh, I think I think John did make the decision. Uh, you know, he felt it was the right thing. I think above the owner Steve Bishotti has been looking for several years for there to be more offense in Baltimore. He's frustrated by it. You know, he's you look on TV and you see these other teams, Packers, and everybody has just got more going for him on offense. And the Ravens were really inconsistent, a lot of sputtering with a lot of talent. I mean, you know, Ray Rice, Torrey Smith, Bolden. I mean, they have a ton of playmakers. And so it just wasn't, it, you know, it was too inconsistent. So the owner, I'm sure, has, uh, has made it known over the years that he wanted more offense, and I think John just finally jumped on it. So what happens with Flacco now? Because he's going to be a free agent. I mean, are they going to just franchise him, or, are they, or is he going to get a big payday with a long-term contract? Well, I think both. I think they will franchise him uh, right away, uh, just 
so they lock him up, and that buys him time to negotiate that long-term contract. They're not going to let him hit free agency, that's for sure. And uh, they will negotiate a contract, and Joe now has the leverage. It's kind of gone back and <laughs> forth. In the end, Joe has the leverage, and Joe's going to get a big contract. I mean, uh, you know, he's, he's got it. Even if they lose the Super Bowl, Joe is going to get a big contract from the Ravens because, I mean, you don't unload a quarterback that's taking you to the Super Bowl and, and uh, been in three conference championship games in five years and uh, done what he's done this year. He obviously is good enough, so they'll, they're going to pay him. All right, and then you got your defense, and, uh, of course, all attention centers on Ray Lewis. How would you assess the way he's played since he's come back from his injury? Well, he's actually getting better as he goes along. Uh, they, they had uh, He came back for the playoffs. His first game was his, his last home game here. A very emotional day, and there was all this emotion. And he had his last dance before the game, you know, coming through the tunnel, and it was <laughs> a big deal. But he, the, uh, truth be known, he didn't play very well that day. I mean, the Colts uh, and the Ravens won. They didn't give up a touchdown in that game, but the Colts picked on him, and he didn't play that well. Move ahead to the Denver game where they won this crazy overtime game, and, uh, you know, the, the Peyton Manning had some success against the Ravens. But the Ravens did a pretty good job, and uh, Ray had like 16 tackles he was in on in that game. So, and listen, that's not hometown padding. No. You know, I mean, there's been some hometown padding of his stats over the years, but he was at Denver for that game. So, pretty good game. And then in New England uh, last week, an- another one. He really played well. I mean, I thought they were going to be really vulnerable to those passes over the middle. Brady just picks you apart with that. And, you know, 37-year-old guy, not that strong in the pass coverage, but he did a great job. So, you know, hats off to him. I mean, he loves the attention and, you know, all this, and he's playing it up to the hilt. I mean, to the hilt. (laughs) But he's actually playing pretty well. You're around a guy all the time. What kind of guy is he uh, with the local media? Well, he's, uh, he's been fine. I mean, you know. I mean, Ray, Ray, he's, he's like an, an actor in a play, you know. He, he's got this part that he plays. He's a, he's a lot more low-key when you're dealing with him on a, on a daily basis. But, you know, come Sunday, he, he puts on that game face and war paint and whatever else. And he, he knows where the cameras are, let me put it that way. People, you know, they call him Red Light Ray. He knows, that he knows where the cameras are. But, uh, you know, it is, it is, he does play. I mean, he plays hard. And... I, I can truly say I've been covering sports for 30 years, football, the Cowboys going back to the 70s, mm. and I, I have never seen a guy that loves to play football more. I mean, you know, I can't believe he's walking away, honestly. Well, I was going to ask you, you think there's any chance that he changes his mind? No, he is done. I mean, he is, he is, he's an old man. I mean, you know, he's <laughs> going to be 38. I mean, he's got kids playing in college, and you talk to him now, I mean, I've watched him. You know, he's well, you know been there for almost half his life, it seems like. And, you know, he's been through huge legal issues when he was younger, big problems that everybody knows about. And, you know, so, I mean, he's grown up. I mean, he's, he's, he's a middle-aged guy now. It, it is time. John Eisenberg from BaltimoreRavens.com. I'm Brian Houston, Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. Uh, the, the bigger issue with Ray Lewis, he's the only link to the last Super Bowl championship. How big of a role do, does he play? How important is he uh, in, in terms of leadership to this football team as they head to New Orleans? Well, he's very important in terms of leadership. Uh, you know, he's, he's done a real nice job of, you know, firing up the team and setting the tone. And, uh, you know, things happen like, uh, I believe uh, the, uh, the CBS was down uh, in the middle of this week uh, yesterday uh, doing a bunch of interviews, and they brought the Lombardi Trophy down, and they had some people pose with it, and I think they do this with both teams. You know, this is sort of part of their broadcast packaging. And, uh, you know, Ray Lewis said, get that thing out of here. You know, we haven't, we haven't won that trophy. Wow. Get it out of here. And that was Ray doing that. And, you know, he's got the cachet that, you know, nobody else would do that. And, you know, when Ray Lewis comes up to you and says, get that thing out of here, people get it out of there. So, uh, you know, he does stuff like that, which I think is actually important in, in some ways. I mean, he really does set a tone. Uh, you know, the, the, the flip side of that is, you know, these, I mean, the, the terms of winning it for Ray, you know, it's been, it's been given an awful lot of TV time. And it's true, but a lot of these guys, I mean, Ed Reed is going to the Hall of Fame, yes. and he has never been in the Super Bowl. Uh, this is his first Super Bowl. Ed Reed is trying to win it for Ed Reed. 
I mean, and Terrell Suggs is the same way. Haloti not. I mean, they have some really great players. Uh, uh, Anquan Bolden has been to a Super Bowl, never won. I mean, they want to win it for Ray, but, uh, you know, the, I wouldn't go too far with that. They, they want to win it for themselves and the team and, and be part of that as well. What makes John Harbaugh uh, the coach that he seems to be? Harbaugh is tough but fair. Uh, I mean, really tough. He's, uh, you know, he's uh, he, he's driven him pretty hard. I mean, uh, they they I think they're a little scared of him to be honest with you, which is <laughs> which is good. I think, and Jim is the same way. They're they're very similar. They are very similar coaches. You know, they're very competitive. They're tough, but they also are supportive. You know, they they you know. So uh, I think players first of all respect fairness uh, first and foremost. You know, uh, you know he's always going to put the team first. And uh, he just has a way of uh, relating to him pretty well that, uh, you know, he's not buddy-buddy with him so that, you know, but yet he's got an upbeat way with him. And uh, it's just his manner is, is, is uh, sort of, it's a very modern coach. I mean, uh, you know, he's old school in that he really, it's a sort of a toughness and, uh, you know, fundamentals, but it's also new school in that he can relate to him and get the most out of them. It's interesting to watch. John Eisenberg from BaltimoreRavens.com on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. It must be a real pleasure. It must be lots of fun to actually cover a real-life professional football organization as opposed to what we look at down the road here in, in Dallas. Yeah, well, that is something. <laughs> it is, uh, listen, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to the Cowboys. You know, I follow them very closely. And Sorry I do about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I well, I have family in Dallas, and I do compare them a lot. And you listen, the Cowboys came into Baltimore this year and had the Ravens beat. They had them beat. This was in October, and just gave the game away, and uh, should have won the game probably by ten points, and and didn't. And so, uh, you know, that just illustrates how the Ravens go up and down. You know, from that point forward, the Ravens have gotten a lot better, and the Cowboys did not. So, uh, yeah, it's a the Ravens are, are run the right way. The, you know, it all boils down to Ozzie Newsom, the guy that picks the players, the general manager, and he's not the owner. He is the general manager, and he picks the players and uh, is the architect of the team. And so the chain of command operates correctly, and uh, that's, that's what happens. All right, let's talk about the book real quickly. We talked about it before, The Ten-Gallon War. You were t- it's a book about the, the Cowboys and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, who were the Dallas Texans, battling for the uh, right to be in Dallas. And How's the book going, and uh, what's the latest on it? Yes, well, the book has done great. I've uh, done some stuff in Texas, and I've done some national uh, interviews, and it's, uh, it's been a great, uh, a great run for the book. And, of course, the people in Baltimore – I made sure and noted that uh, the Ravens uh, brought home the Lamar Hunt Trophy uh, when they won in New England, you know, and that's when you know you're getting old, Brian. You, yes. know, you, you know, people, I say, hey, I knew that dude, you know, that's, 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 that's bad. But uh, anyway, uh, it was, it's done great. You know, it's, just, it's the first three years of pro football in Dallas when the Cowboys and the Dallas Texans were fighting over Dallas and Lamar Hunt, Clint Murkison, the whole story, and I've I've done just a ton of stuff all over the country and I've really enjoyed uh, you know bringing up uh, you know the opportunity to to talk about those guys and that story and uh, and and you know it's still relevant today you know the Lamar Hunt Trophy comes around and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Now uh, the uh, is it in a paperback form yet? It is not in paperback form yet. That'll be probably this spring or summer. Okay. Uh, probably in the summer, but right now it's still hardback. Uh, the ten gallon war, uh, you know, and it's available everywhere, and uh, certainly down in Texas, uh, no doubt. Now, are you getting ready to write a book about this Ravens team? Uh, well, I wasn't planning to. <laughs> hey, you usually <laughs> jump all over these things when they win Super Bowls, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm certainly in place, so you're not the first person that's mentioned it. So we'll see. I think they need to win the game first. They don't write books about conference champions. Probably a good idea. You you have you have a good point there. And the other thing, I don't want to ignore this, but uh, uh, you know, when it gets right down to it, the, what do you think the chances are of the Ravens beating the the 49ers? Because the 49ers are favored in this game. The Ravens yeah. have been underdogs in every playoff game they've played this year. Uh, what kind of game are you expecting? Uh, I think it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be uh, both teams can move the ball. Both teams have good defenses. They hit hard. I think it's an evenly matched game. So I think it's going to be competitive. 
and interesting. You know, a good Super Bowl and the brother thing is a good angle. People enjoy it. And, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, if I were a betting man, I would take those points. Uh, you know, the Ravens uh, are playing, you know, I, I didn't give them much chance coming into the playoffs and actually would have uh, uh, bet against them when they were playing the Colts in the first round. I would have done that, but since then they're definitely gotten a ton of confidence and and uh, winning these games and you know just took apart the New England Patriots in New England last week. Uh, you know I would I, I think the Ravens are going to win this game. I think that uh, you know they've got an awful lot of veteran talent. They're a rugged sort of sort of uh, you know hard knocks team that's been through a lot and they know you know these are veteran guys and uh, and they're hot. So I think it's a good combination. Outstanding. John, we really appreciate you coming on today. And again, I want to encourage everybody, if you haven't uh, had a chance to read The Ten Gallon War, check it out. Go to Amazon.com and you're download it on your Kindle or whatever. And uh, we do appreciate you coming in. Enjoy your trip to, to uh, New Orleans, okay? Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. John Eisenberg from the BaltimoreRavens.com on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.